Good morning, everybody. We have this gift wrap present on the trailer. We're about to go take it off the trailer and we'll pick up another one. We're in Brainerd, Minnesota. Hopefully we'll get this off the trailer quick because I got to run back up to Kenora, Ontario in Canada. Grab another one of these and come right back down here. If everything works out good, we should be able to have lots of time. If everything works good and if the plan goes according to plan. Old Blue, are you on board with the plan? You gonna help me out? Of course you are. Got the engine heater running here. We're gonna get this thing started up. Already checked everything out. It's good to go. I love that this truck holds air through the night. Still over 100 PSI. Right where I left it. Ready for the day. Highway 6 here in Minnesota is sure bumpy. Whew. You can tell it's that time of year. You know, the water gets into all these cracks, and then at nighttime it freezes and then it expands. 300 meters, turn right on MN 200. And then during the day it melts, right? And then more water flows in there because now there's a bigger space. And then it freezes at night again and expands it even further. It's just a cycle of destruction. <laughs> I'm on my way back up to Kenora. I'm in a big rush though. Again, I'm always in a rush, right? But I'm in a legit rush. I've got like four hours, no, five and a half, five hours of driving maybe left to go and about five hours to get there. So I have zero time for any stops, for any delays anything this is uh reamer or is it remmer minnesota nice little northern minnesota town classic sort of has that old 19th century feel when you go down main street right i love that one of the good things about small towns. Meters, keep to the left on MM6. Karen, you don't have to interrupt me every single time, you know? And you don't even have to tell me to go left. I can just go straight. I don't actually have to turn left. Watch, I'll show you. See, so you're gonna tell me to turn left. Why don't you just be quiet and I'll just continue on straight. In 200 meters, keep to the left on MM6. Or I can just follow the road. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look at this. Stay on six. I guess I could have gone that way on the 200. Continue on this road for 34 kilometers. Okay. Okay. I think that was an unnecessary interruption, but I get it. I get it. Some people might need to know that, hey, you need to keep left. I get it. Okay. Maybe I was wrong. I can admit when I'm wrong. Sometimes Karen wins these arguments. Not very often though. This is International Falls again, coming the other way. I'm going across the toll bridge. I'm not too happy about it, but uh, every minute counts. It's about maybe 15, 10 to 15 minutes longer going through Rainy River, but there's no toll there, right? On the way back north, here you have to pay a toll to get back into Canada. It's 514 kilometers from Brainerd to Kenora, kilometer, going through International on, Falls. Second Avenue, US 53. If you go through Rainy River, it's 534, so 20 kilometers further. Doesn't cost, it definitely saves, because the, the cost you have in fuel is less than the cost of the toll here. So it is, but it's a little bit longer, and I'm on a tight time frame of a schedule here. I can't afford to lose one minute that I don't have to. So I decided to come through here and pay the toll just so that uh, I don't end up in being 600 late. 600 meters, turn left on 2nd Avenue, 
US 53 and then turn left to 900 meters. I'm that much on a time crunch that 10 minutes counts. So we'll go through downtown, make a left, go over the bridge, and we'll be back in Canada. And I have about another two hours, a little more, up to Kenora. We should be arriving there. Meters, turn Karen. left on Second Avenue, US 53, and then turn left to 900 meters. We should be arriving there at about 3.30, and I gotta be there before 4. They like us there by 3.30, so like I said, I'm, I'm cutting it real close. Hopefully they won't be too unhappy to see me, but I'm a familiar face, I'm there all the time. They know I'll be quick in and out. such a hurry. This morning it took a little bit of time to get my trailer unloaded. There was two trucks in front of me. Had I been first, I would have gone around the other way. I would have saved this money. But you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Can't be late. I might be if these people don't hurry up. Wow, oversized loads. I'm just looking at that pay scale off on the left. So trucks and semis, $13 US, first two axles, I think. Yeah, first two axles, $13. If you're oversized, first two axles is $350 US dollars. Oh, it's just for the first two axles. Yikes. Highway 11 and 71 West. In That's where we want to go. Turn left 
turn left on 2nd Street East. I already figured out where I'm going, Karen. You're a little late to the party here. Especially if you're going east, you gotta follow the signs very carefully because they don't let trucks just in anywhere here. Just barely, but I made it on the last truck here. So I'll get loaded shortly, and then there's a bit of a lineup for the tarp shed. But that's okay, because once I get loaded, I'm not in a rush anymore. I'm just in a regular rush, or just a you know regular trucker rush. Not like this morning trying to get here, which was just a whoo. You know what I mean? Just a whoo. I don't know what that means. That was supposed to be like a jet engine, I guess, just flying down the highway at the speed limit at the speed limit disclaimer but right at that maximum speed limit I tell you what <laughs> not wasted any time I'm happy that I got here so now uh, I'll get as far back as I can tonight I'm not gonna get all the way back to uh, Brainerd I don't think maybe I'll get back down to Deer River that's sort of my goal Deer River, and then uh, that's about an hour and a half from Brainerd. We'll sleep there, wake up in the morning, make our way down, unload that, and then we'll see what they have for us after that. I'm not sure if they have anything or... Oh, these glasses are dirty again. Any of you wear glasses? Always, they're always dirty, right? Right? Always, always dirty. I use these, like, lens wipes. They're the best way to clean your glasses without scratching them because I learned the hard way. These were my first pair of glasses in my life. The first ones ever. I didn't know what I was doing. I scratched them all up trying to clean them all the time with like uh, microfiber towels. I thought that, you know, microfiber towels are soft. They won't scratch them. Well, the thing is the dust particles inside the microfiber. You, you guys know. So now these things, it's like they're all individually wrapped so you know they're not all full of garbage. I just get the dust off of them like this real lightly and then I flip it around and then I finish off the detail work like this how to clean your glasses with trucker Josh disclaimer I'm no expert there's probably better ways of doing this I'm, I got a big scratch on this lens it was actually here uh, it's a good thing I was wearing my glasses oh no no it wasn't here where was it anyways I was putting bungees on a tarp 
and one of the bungees broke and it came around and flipped up and boom hit the lens of my glasses good thing i was wearing them right saved my eye but uh it scratched my lens so i've got an appointment in april i made the appointment beginning of february the soonest appointment they had for me at the, at the optometrist in town was April. And that was the best one. Other, All the other optometrists were like booking into June, July. One was August, I think. I think. Just a little bit of April. So I got to deal with this little scuff in my glasses until then. How's that? How's that? Not bad, but I can see the little scuff right there. You want to see it? See if you can see it. There's a little, see it right there? That's where the bungee hit me. You can see there's all kinds of other scratches on there already too, right? That's from me being foolish at the beginning. Man, they look dirty on here. They're still, are they still dirty? No, it's just, they're so scratched up. But yeah, that big one right there, that is so annoying. So annoying. So I'm getting new glasses in a couple of months. I really don't want to buy new glasses. I really don't. Because they still work good. Like, I can't see any of those scratches on here. I can't see any of them when they're this close to my face, but I can see this one, the big one. It's always there. And we're back. Back in Fort Francis, about to cross back into International Falls. I'll be able to make it down to Deer River. I just hope there's going to be a parking spot there available for me. I know they only have like five, four or five spots. And very often they're uh, taken up by, I guess, locals who just go home for night. And just leave their truck there in a spot and then there's none left for us. So we'll see. Usually when I stop, then usually I find somewhere to park. So I was in and out of there in Kenora, just over two hours, two hours and six minutes. So it went really well. International Bridge, Highway 71 and then turn right in 610 meters. See this traffic light meters, here. Turn right on International Bridge, Highway 71 and then turn right in 610 meters. This traffic light here confuses me because there's a sign off here just to the right that says right turn permitted on red signal. But there's no right turn. There's a, a river there. Do they consider going straight? Because the straight here is slightly to the right. Do they consider that a right turn? Can I go through this red then? But I, I've never gone through the red because I don't, I don't... I'm assuming that's what the sign must mean, but I'm not risking it. Right turn permitted on red signal. There is no right turn. Just over on the other side of this bridge is America. Checked my border clearance is all good to go. International Falls. You know, one of these days I really need to stop doing my walks. Yeah, I try to go on a walk every day, right? I try to stop in small towns, wherever I can, wherever I can find parking, and sort of just go for a little walk around the neighborhood, sort of explore the area, right? It seems like a really nice town, and I come through here all the time. I don't know much about it, though. Paper mill right over there to our right. Along this road for 18 kilometers. And it stinks up town some days. About the extent of what I know. Like all these little shops on down this street here. I'd love to just go and sort of 
window shop or just browse, just walk through, walk down the street here, window shop, you know. See what they all got to offer. You guys ever do that? I don't know, maybe I'm just curious. I have this roaming adventurous spirit inside of me. I just want to see places. I want to see what's there. I want to know how it got there. Where'd it come from? Who are the people? Where'd they come from? How long have they been here? So we made it here to Deer River last night. I'm just getting ready to go the next day. Oh, these tarps get so dirty on these roads in wintertime. I wash them off, but uh, they look like that after one trip again. It's a never ending battle. Yeah, we got this nice little Christmas present here being delivered in late February 2024 into Brainerd, Minnesota. We'll do that in tomorrow's video. Like I said, I've got the triaxle with me this week. All of our, uh, well, there was a few of our tandem trailers that were being serviced, so we have these rentals. They just happen to be a triaxle. I don't need it on this trip, but it's handy to have it. If I ever bought my own trailer, it would definitely have a triaxle, but I'd also have two of the axles that can lift up, or at least one of them, so I can make it into a tandem. But it runs smooth. It's a good, tough trailer. And the weather out here is great. Look at this. It's springtime already. We didn't even have winter this year. It's fantastic. Cannot complain about that. Very happy. Ah, yes. Oh. So it's time for me to uh, leave you guys here. May have been a bit, bit of a may have been a bit of a shorter video. But, uh, I've been really rushed these last couple of days. It's just go go go. I film what I can as I go, and then I'll put these together a little bit later. That's why the videos are a little bit late sometimes, a little bit uh, behind, a few days behind. But if you are a member of the channel, you can always get early access to them as soon as they're uploaded. Sometimes I only get one uploaded per day and you get it a few hours early. Other times I have like a whole week's worth. When I have a lot of time, I get all caught up, which is awesome. I, I, I like to stay caught up. When I'm all caught up, I have like five or six videos sometimes that are online, but I only want to release one per day publicly, right? But I put them all online there and then uh, members have access to them. So if you want to support the channel, that's one way you can. Uh, down below the channel or down below the video, you'll see the join now button. But the best thing you can do to support me, which is free, is give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below. Maybe go down below, reply to some comments as well. Please be respectful to everybody there, but yeah, start some conversations down there. All of that helps me with the algorithms and gets my videos in front of more people. That's the best way to support me for free. You can also subscribe. That's also free because then you'll get notifications. Hit that bell. You know how YouTube works, right? That's, that's the best ways you can uh, help me build my channel and grow further. We've been doing this for 10 to 12 years. I guess I'd be more angry, but 12 years. We started in 2011. Yeah, it's been a while. If you're new here, go to my main channel page, go to my playlists. You can see all my playlists organized there for you to watch so you can follow along. And that's all I have to say right now. I gotta get going on tomorrow's vlog and tomorrow's day, because tomorrow is today for me. See you later, everybody. Take care.